lots of glare, I know. But look at this. Just look at this. This is a. It is April fourteenth. April. It is snowing outside. I know further up north it's snowing a lot more than this. Uh, my friend Ben that may be watching this may be wanting to yell at me over how little snow we have, but it's still, it's snowing. Earlier this week, we were at 20 degrees Celsius. What? <sighs> Boo Kitty's back. Everybody say hi to Boo Kitty. She's very excited. Mostly because it's time for me to feed her. That's most of the reason why she's excited about anything. She's a very food-oriented kitty. And silly. I like silly kitties. I, I really just like kitties in general. Meow. Oh. I've been working on my bookshelf. Um, these are my older QC books. Not sure what to do with them because uh, my volume one is actually signed. The reason why I'm not sure what to do with them is that I have the new version of the books right there where volume one is not signed. I think my volumes four and five are signed, I want to say. I know, I'm not feeding you. Let me go feed you and I'll be back. So, um, this is going to be another quick video because I am really tired for some reason. I actually took a multi-hour nap today and it was really nice. Zone curled up and under the covers with me. It was very adorable. So, I, yesterday I had talked about my board games, which probably should have had as a separate video just so I had more topics, but today is a different type of tabletop game I wanted to talk about. Uh, different type of tabletop game collection, that is. These are my role-playing books. I have a lot of them. It's just this shelf at this point. I had actually sold most of my uh, extra D&D 3.5 edition books because they're never going to get used. I uh, just wanted to point out some things. So... Of the modern era and the first books that I have ever owned, these are my D&D 3.0 books. Um, these are the original ones that I purchased way back in 2001 is when I... Did I buy these in 2001 or 2002? Let me check. I did not write it in. I do have nice tabs for things that this was... Prior to me actually having any, uh, whatchamacallit, um, PDFs of things and so on. But, yeah, this is my original PHP. I either bought it in 2001 or 2002. Hard-earned money. Yeah. Um, the DMG came later. As did the only 3.0 splat book I own. Which... I can't exactly sell to anybody because, seriously, that is a dime a dozen in commonness. Anyway, from there I've got three five books. These are the only ones I have left, I believe. Yeah, these are the only 3.5 books that I have remaining. Magic of Incarnum is one that I actually use for my campaign setting that I currently do D&D &D in. So I don't want to sell it. And this is my PHP. It's a leather-bound PHP. Again, this is the 3.5 PHP. It's very nice. I really like this PHP. It's probably my favorite of these books. It has a bookmark, which is somewhere. Anyway, it's somewhere. It's there. And it's just really nice. Also, this PHP is apparently worth about 200 US dollars because they didn't, it's a limited edition thing, but nobody's going to actually pay that much for it. So if somebody's willing to buy the PHP for $200, I'm not going to say no. Uh, from there, I've got my Pathfinder books. So I've got the Core Rulebook, Advanced Player's Guide, Game Mastery Guide, and the DM Shield that I purchased. I don't normally use DM screens, but this one was really pretty and it's fairly durable. It's made of... Um, cover material yeah and it actually has some useful pathfinder things in it i haven't run a pathfinder game for a few years now but 
it seemed to be the type of thing that looked really interesting, and I happened to have found the uh, DM screen for rather cheap. From here, I've got my D&D 4th Edition books. I have played as a player only of 4th Edition. I have not run a 4th Edition game. Don't particularly want to, because I did not have a very good experience with 4th Edition. But my character used things from the Player's Handbook 1 and 2, so I thought I should probably actually own them. Then I've got my 5th edition things. Um, up until this week, I only owned the Player's Handbook. This week or last week. I think it came in last week. Anyway, Player's Handbook. And oh, I also own the Dungeon Master Guide. Amazon had a sale on books, so I also picked up the Monster Manual and the Xanathar's Guide to Everything. I know I have players that use the Xanathar's Guide, and I figured actually having a Monster Manual for the first time ever, if you didn't notice, might not be a bad idea. So talking about some of the non-D&D things, I have my printed out version of the Returner's Final Fantasy RPG 2nd Edition, which was the first game that I had ever run. I'm actually still running, uh, well, the campaign's been on hiatus for what feels like forever now. I would really like to get back to it, but technically I am still running the campaign. one of the campaigns that I started with this. It's migrated systems multiple times. Really, I just have the, just notice that it's upside down. Is it upside down, or is it that I, yep, I just put everything in backwards, or I just wrote it upside down. Good job, me. Anyway, um, I never want to run the system again, so it's really here just here for nostalgia. Uh, going over to the other side, I have Godlike. So I was a player in a Godlike game in Florida that I enjoyed. And I figured it would kind of like to actually own the books. I had only ever seen the DMs book. And I picked this up at the um, Pegasus Games garage sale. And I think it was like two or three US dollars. This is technically a role-playing book, even though I didn't realize it. I was looking for some campaign ideas. That's actually why the dictionary was out. I rearranged the shelf so my new books would fit in. Um, I had picked up a few fairy tale imaginary place type things. So I have a dictionary of imaginary places along with a dictionary of mythology that I was rereading uh, probably a couple of years ago. And I had also picked up this book, Fairy Tales for a New Millennium. And it turns out that Deliria is actually a role-playing system. I never realized it when I had picked it up. And I had briefly flipped through. Oh, hey, look, artistic nudity. Um, I had briefly flipped through, but... It is a full-on role-playing system. There's mechanics assigned it, and at some point, I would like to actually run a game in this, but, well, I never have. So, yeah, it's interesting. I have no idea if the system's any good. I was mostly using it for references and so on, and I've actually used it for that. Yes, yes, soon. Uh-huh. I swear that cat knows what cameras are. Let me put this back. This is not so easy to do with one hand. I should know better. My mom's one-handed. I learned from her. Uh, I've got some map things. This should actually be over here. Anyway, um, I like picking up map folios, mostly because they're interesting to me. I get to see how other people design maps. Oh, Isun's rubbing up against my arm. I'm sorry for not paying attention to you, Isun. So, yeah. The map folios are just basically a folder full of maps that don't even have a pocket. I'm not particularly a fan of the style of how they package them, but I like maps. Technically, that's 3-5 maps, but, well, role-playing maps are role-playing maps. Uh, my other maps include this fantasy art and RPG maps book. And I also have, not on this shelf, it just dawned on me, it's on one of my back bookshelves. Let me grab that really fast. And it's not there for some reason, that's going to be annoying. Anyway, um, I have some How to Draw Maps books. This one is the one that I read the most recently, I believe. It's basically a book as to how to draw beautiful maps. I have an interest in cartography. It's actually the reason why I've taught myself how to draw, after being told for many years that I can't. Um, 
I'm doing a lot better at maps compared to what I was used to doing. Uh, mountains are still one of my weaknesses, but I'm going to be working on that. Anyway, it's, a near, it's not entirely role-playing, strictly role-playing related. I'm actually going to be using this for when and if I ever draw a book. But yeah, maps. Yay, maps. Let me put this with my other stuff. I have Xcrawl. Xcrawl is a D&D-ish system. It is technically a D20 system, as the logo says. It's basically, we're in modern day, slightly alternate universe, and the most popular sport in the world is Dungeons and Dragons. Not as in playing D&D with dice and so on, but basically think pro wrestling version of dungeon crawling. So you've got faces and heels, you've got necromancers, hence um, one of these books is, is it this one, Necromerica? Yep, this one's Necromerica. Um, anyway, it is modern day set for a D&D &D dungeon crawl. I always thought the concept was hilarious, and I've always wanted to run a game of this. Once more, this was a garage sale purchase for all of it. I want to say it cost me 10 US dollars, but... I have yet to run a game with it. I would probably end up ripping out the system because the back-end system is probably 3.5 based. But still, I would like to run it. haven't been able to. Spycraft. This one is a really interesting system. I think this is the D20 version of Spycraft. Uh, let me double-check really fast. It'd probably be pretty easy to figure out from flipping through. Yes, this is definitely the D20 version of Spycraft. Anyway, um, Spycraft is an interesting game. Uh, this is another one of those I've always wanted to run it, except this one I actually bought the book myself. Uh, it's a relatively simple system, but it's espionage-focused. And I really want to play a game that's espionage-based, and I know with the way my role-playing groups work, the only way I'm ever going to play a game like that is if I run it myself. Also... I bought a lot of role-playing books with the idea of figuring out if I'm going, or basically using some ideas from various role-playing systems for spawning ideas of my own role-playing system. It's actually the reason why I have Fate right here. I have barely read the rules of Fate. That's what that piece of paper is, I believe. Is my bookmark and receipt, yeah. So I have barely flipped through the fate core rules at all uh, I'm it's on my to-do list I don't know if I would ever run a game in fate but it would be interesting to do so <sighs> fiasco so I fell in love with this system after watching it being played on tabletop I bought the book pretty much immediately I absolutely want to run a game in using fiasco I cannot believe that none of my players have let me run one. It's, it's a simple system. It's just, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for something comfortable and easy for them to know. And since I already know D&D, that's what they get. It's sad. It, there's a lot of things that I would kind of like to play with a different set of players, just so I'd experience new things. But I don't have the time to do that. Not to mention then my players are going to feel left out. My players are also, uh, at least one of them watches these videos, so, hi! Finally, we have the True 20 role-playing system. It's another one of those spin-offs that I think may have come about as a result of, uh, which we'll call it, the D&D 3-5 splitting. This is a D20-ish based system for generic role-playing, not just fantasy-based. Also, I liked how they handled the examples of role-playing, where it's basically role-playing out an example of role-playing. I kind of used similar ideas for my own uh, role-playing system. So, yeah, this is another D20-ish based system. But it's not... It's probably less associated with... Um, whatchamacallit? D&D uh, &D than the rest of these D20 based systems. And this is not a D20 system. Or, this is not a book that has the D20 system logo on it anywhere. So it's not technically D20 compatible. It is True 20 instead. I'm pretty sure I did not spend $27 on it, but I don't remember anymore. So yeah. 
it's mostly what I have up here. So let me slide this book back in. Again, it's really difficult for me to slide books in with one hand for some reason. Um, technically, there's also a practical guide to monsters. I picked this up at Gen Con because I like the pretty pictures of dragons. Yep, that, that, that's the only reason. Uh, finally, I've got some notebooks back here and some folders. These have some role-playing things in them. Like, for an example, there's a sheet of paper that fell. This sheet of paper has the name of characters for a role-playing game that we ended up playing. This role-playing game, this one right here, is what ended up being the role-playing game, or this is the first, or really second, but basically first of the D&D games of my current D&D campaign. Complete with all the players and everything. Anyway, um, this folder here has some templates in it, like for instance, various hex-based templates for how far a range a cone works, uh, fireball range, some of my characters are in here, uh, this is Valen's character sheet, I believe, yeah. This is Lauren Yentis, who I never got a chance to play. I made this character for some campaign. I don't remember. Oh, that's right. I remember now. This was the campaign that Mike was running. Um, that was my very calm sorcerer. He was a farmer. Not very smart. I will put that back later. Because, uh, anyway, I've got a sketchbook here. This is just a blank notebook. But it has thick enough paper and unlined where I can do sketches. This is a city, for instance. And I think this might be the only thing sketched in the book, sadly. Along with a legend and so on. This is the city of Gren in Charna. Yep, it's the only thing in the book. Fit that back in. Then I've got some notebooks, in which I've taken notes in various times. Um, they're horribly disorganized. And then finally, I've got one of my old campaign binders. This binder, to give you an idea of how long ago this was, I don't know if, who remembers Creepy Guy with a Stick. He drew this. It was pretty. Um, there's a lot of role-playing characters in here, mostly characters other people made, uh, that who gave me their character sheets type of thing. Um, there's also some of my basic outlines of campaigns and so on and yeah so that's it so i know there's more in the way of role-playing stuff that i couldn't easily find there now i don't have to hold it with constantly up i can use my bookshelf i know there's more role-playing stuff that i have around here somewhere i mean i'm actually seeing a couple more notebooks right here like my totally awesome notebook that i have barely used because I buy notebooks like crazy and end up not using them. But this is a creativity notebook. It has three sections in it. One is completely unlined. One of it is regular rule. And the third was, is that also unlined? Or is that something else? Let me glance. That's unlined. Yep. So, oh, that's right. Um, first section, which from your perspective is on the right. Uh, first section is regular lines, second section is graph paper, third sec and quadro graph paper, and third section is completely unlined. It is perfect for a role-playing notebook. I have barely used it, but I have actually used it at least. Um, I do use a lot of my notebooks, with a couple of exceptions that I have behind me that I'm hiding. Uh, but I just like pretty notebooks. What can I say? That's really about it. If anybody has any questions about the things that I've been showing, please feel free to ask. I can totally do videos on most of these things. I just don't think they're fascinating for most people. Good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Right, cat? Right. This is the way Isun decided to actually put himself. His torso is resting on my shoulder. His legs are behind my shoulder. Oh, now he decides to get down. I guess he's just camera shy.